in this video, we're going to expand on what a function is and also look at some applications of functions where hopefully this makes it a little bit more easier to um, you know, input some functions that we're pretty much doing in class. So a function, remember, is for every input. So for every input, so think of this like a machine. So this is a machine of some, short, of some sort. And you get this f of x in here. So this f of x, sort of say. That's how you would say uh, this, f of x. And so let's say, for example, that we put in a 3. Um, and we, if we put in a, a value of 3 into our function, so into our function, um, we're going to get something going, and then it's going to produce some kind of output of that three. So that's kind of what the short notation of this is, is that if you put in something, it gets worked out and then something comes out of it. So for example, let's do maybe like a problem of this. So let's do something like this. Um, what if I had f of x equals two? x. So something like f of x equals 2x. And this means that I'm going to always multiply. I'm always going to multiply um, multiply by 2. I'm always going to multiply by 2 in my system. So whatever I throw in there, for my example, what if I whatever I put in for my um, different, uh, my x, so whatever I put in for here, it's going to get multiplied here. And this might not make any sense yet, but it will. So let's go ahead and get some values. So I want to write down some values for you just to help you out a little bit. So maybe that if we make a little table, a little t table, just like this, and what I'm going to do is use this value for our x's. This is going to be for our f of x equals 2x. And this is going to be our f of x. Remember, f of x is technically the y. Okay? And so we're going to only go ahead and plug some numbers into this function. Remember, this guy right here is technically this guy right here. This right here is this right here. This is, this is the machine, and we're putting and we're inputting our numbers here. These are our inputs. These are our x's. We're putting different x's to get different y outputs. So let's go ahead and do some of these. Um, I'm just going to pick some random numbers and you know, make them small enough so when we get the output, they will be a little bit better to use. So let's do this. So I'm just going to pick some random numbers. Um, usually I pick negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and I tell you what, let's, let's put another number of 3. We can use any numbers we want, but remember we have to multiply by 2. So what we're going to do is do something like this. We're going to go f of x equals 2 parentheses. So I'm hoping that you see the parentheses that I use is where I'm going to input this negative one. So I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to put it right there. Okay. And then what is the next one going to be? Well, this is going to be the same thing, but this time we're going to put in place this input, which is zero and zero. So let's just keep going down and making sure that we're always having two at um, our disposal. Okay. So we're going down here. I'm just filling in all the twos and putting the parentheses where it should be. Now, um, put in one. So here's one, here's one, here's two, here's two, here's three, here's three. Okay, so all I did is put these inputs. Remember, these are your inputs. These are your inputs. These are what values we're putting into the machine, into our function at the top. Now, we're going to go ahead and just do some PIMDOS. So what is 2 times negative 1? What is 2 times negative 1? And I'm hoping you're going to say negative 2. What is 2 times 0? Zero? 0. 
What's two times one? Two. What's two times two? Four. Two times three? Uh, six. So you can kind of see that these are all going to be multiplied by two. Whatever numbers that we stick in here goes through the uh, goes through the machine, and then our output comes here. So we put in some inputs, functions, and outputs. Now um, that's pretty much it. And then we can go ahead and graph these. But I want to make one more thing of this. What if I wanted to see some uh, X and Y values or some ordered pairs? Well, remember, this is the first order pair. This is negative 1, negative 2. That's the first order pair. Here's the next one, 0, 0. Here's the next one, 1, 2. Here's the next one, 2, 4. And here's the last one. So those are those, these are these ordered pairs. And those come from here. Okay. So those are the ordered pairs we get. And then we can go ahead and graph these if we want, if we wanted to see a graph of 2x, which we can do later. But that's pretty much all we're doing. So real quick, I want to give you another one of these and kind of go through the same system, but let's make this a little bit more complex. Okay, a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and do um, this one here. So for example, what if I wanted to write uh, f of x equals um, 1 over x. Now you're probably thinking it's a division. That's okay. So here's what I want you to do. Make a table of values. And here's going to be our x's. Here's our system that we are plugging them in. And here's our going to be our f of x. Remember, this is also equal to y. This is our output. Okay. So now we just, I don't know, pick some numbers. So could I pick this? Can I pick the same one we did at the top? Of course you can. You can pick any ones you want. Sometimes I will give them to you, or sometimes I might pick any one you want. So I'm just going to pick the same ones just because it's a little bit clearer. And it's they're, they're, these are nice numbers. These are easy numbers. If you want to go all out and pick some random big numbers, I don't care. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and plug these in. Remember, wherever the X is, you're going to leave a parenthesis because that's what you are plugging in. Okay, and hopefully if you did this correctly, you have some room to work with all these. Okay, I'm just going to actually go from here, and this is kind of going to go uneven for a little bit, but you can, you can make sense of it, I'm hoping. Okay, so... What am I going to put into this parentheses? I'm going to put in these numbers here. So negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And that's all I'm going to put. Now, what are the outputs that, that, uh, that come out of this? Well, what is 1 divided by negative 1? What is 1 divided by negative 1? Well, that's going to be negative 1. Okay, can you divide, can you, can you divide by zero? Can you do that? If you put that into a calculator, it's going to say undefined. So this is going to be undefined. And that's okay. So you're just going to say undefined. It's not going to happen. You can't divide this by zero. So something, something happens at zero for this function. Now put in one, well, what's one divided by one? One, what's one divided by two? Well, you can just actually just put it as one half. It's a fraction, right? What's one divided by three? One third. So you can just write these as fractions. Yes, you can graph fractions. And if we go at the bottom and make these into ordered pairs, we get negative one, negative one. We get zero undefined. We can't do that one. Uh, at one, one at two a half, at three is one third. So those are your ordered pairs. So these are your ordered pairs. Okay. So we can, I can give you so many functions and we can be here all day, but why don't I just show you kind of what we are doing with most, with 
pretty much every function we come out of just to kind of make this a little bit easier and clarify things for us. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and I kind of came up with this idea. You know, I, mean, I get this idea from something else, but this is our function that we just did a little bit ago. So this function here, so I tell you what, this is f of x2, so this is going to be f of this equals 2. This is, this is the function we just did on the back. And remember what goes here. We don't know what goes here because those are inputs. Well, let me just show you what you're doing. You are just taking some numbers like this, and what you're doing is that you are doing something like this. Okay? Just plugging that in. And then, what if I wanted to plug in a one? Or oh, sorry, what if I wanted to plug in a three? Two times three. What if I wanted to plug in a two? Two times two. What if I wanted to plug in a one? One times, uh, two times one. What if I wanted to plug in that zero? Zero, but make sure that zero fits in there. Two times zero is zero. And then uh, negative one, negative one and then negative two, negative two. So all you're doing is plugging in some numbers to get some something out of it. And that's our original function, f of x. Remember, f of x equals two times x, or two x. That's your original function, okay? Let me show you the other one we did. Um, we did this one here. We just did this one. And we can say that this is f of x, 1 over x. We just did this one on the back. Okay? And all we're doing is taking our same values that we worked out with. And now we're just doing the same thing. That's our original function. And then you're just going to go ahead and put 3's in. And you're going to put 2's in. You're going to put 1 in, or positive 1. And then this is where the problem, remember, this is where the problem was when we plugged in zero. And as you get more into math, you're going to figure out what happens at that, uh, that position. What happens? You know, that's part of the uh, learning process here. And if you put negative one, and then if you put uh, negative two in there. So really, you can see is that you can pretty much put any number, but... All you really need to do is make sure that you're always having like that one or that number in that front somewhere, okay? And you can have something very long and you can do this. So that's pretty much all you're doing. And I just want to show you one more since, you know, we're on this topic and I don't want to give you so much on this. But this one right here is something that we have here. So this is our function, 2x plus 3. So this is our function here. And remember, this is what you're putting into it. So anything that you put in for your, your input, you have to multiply first, add 3. You're always adding 3 to it this time. So you have something extended to it. Uh, if you put a 3 in, you're going to multiply first, add 3. 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 And you can kind of see the connection to that. Okay? So, that's pretty much what we have to do with this. It's just we start with our equation, our original equation. So this is our, um, what we call our original, original equation. And really, we're just plugging in some numbers. Yes, you can plug in whatever you want. But as long as you multiply and then add 3, especially for this one, okay? Um, so that's pretty much what the whole process of this is, is that you're taking some function, I don't care what it is, I mean, they can be pretty bad. I can give you something like this, and this could mean some kind of uh, equation out there that maybe it's in business or in finance, and, you know, you could 
sit here all day. I mean, this has, I mean, one, two, three inputs. So whatever number that I um, choose for my f of x, you have to make sure it goes here, here, and here. And you're going to be doing some multiplication or some powers, I should say, too, first. So a lot of it has to deal with that concept of PEMDAS. Remember, or some of you remember it maybe as Jim Doss, depending on your teacher. And really, you just have to remember those terms. And that's why you can't not forget your foundations of what you learned in previous classes or previous uh, in this class. Um, you just can't forget about those fundamentals because what's going to happen is that if you don't practice these, like PIMDOS, um, you can't do this. You can't do this higher math block because you are, you know, you're doing something else. All right. I'm hoping that helped. This was just a quick video. I try to keep this as much as I could uh, below, but um, hopefully that helps. And I will see you later.